I'm on an expedition into the mountains of West Virginia. I'm investigating how what happens here impacts what happens hundreds of miles downstream. What I'm discovering is part of a cycle that has global repercussions. The Earth is a water planet. More living creatures live beneath the waves than in our world above them. But our actions are creating vast underwater areas where nothing can live. These are dead zones. 400 have been identified around the world so far. We are undertaking an expedition to explore these strange phenomena and to uncover what causes them. I'm Philippe Gusteau. Join me for Earth Echo Expedition into the dead zone. So far in our expedition through the Chesapeake Bay watershed, I've followed waterways upstream to cities and farms. Now my journey takes me even higher into the mountains of West Virginia. Much of this state appears wild and untouched. Over three quarters is covered by forests. Its streams are the headwaters of some of our nation's mightiest rivers, including those that feed into the Chesapeake Bay. It also appears to be a great place to do some fly fishing. Got it. Now there are plenty of fish in the streams here, but people oftentimes don't eat what they catch. And I've come here to West Virginia to talk to somebody who knows a lot about mountain streams to find out just what's going on here. I'm meeting up with Jenny Newland from the Canaan Valley Institute an organization committed to protecting and restoring West Virginia's streams. You know what? Look at this clean. water, it looks clean, it feels nice and fresh and yeah, cool, yeah. Yeah. but there is something almost invisible mm -hmm. that's lurking here yeah. in the river. Wastewater is the used water that leaves our showers, toilets, dishwashers, car washes, and more, and it can run directly into these rural waterways. Lots of rural communities that are isolated and far from bigger cities don't have adequate wastewater treatment because the cost per home is really expensive. Jenny explains that it's easy to treat wastewater in cities because people live close together and can share the cost. In rural areas, communities are much more spread out and the cost for building a wastewater treatment system can be staggering. Some property owners pipe their sewage straight into the nearest stream, and this contributes to the dead zone in the Chesapeake Bay. So what are the main nutrients that are of concern coming into the river, and where do they come from? Here where we have trouble with wastewater that's coming from homes and businesses, two of the main nutrients we're worried about are nitrogen and phosphorus. A lot of work has been done to remove phosphorus from detergents and soaps, so that's becoming less and less of a problem, but there's still a lot of nitrogen in... Human waste. Human waste. Flushing things down the toilet, going yes. to the bathroom. Yes, and, and also production of food, so any food processing plants, um, anything like that also produce a lot of nutrients. It's shocking to me to think that you can come down to a stream and go fishing, but you can't eat that fish. Usually, if a stream is going to be that contaminated, you're going to smell it. And you're probably not going to want to fish there anyway. It's going to smell like your toilet. Preventing phosphorus and nitrogen from entering watersheds, whether from our farms or our homes, is a challenge that stretches beyond the Chesapeake into communities across the world. The next part of our journey, I'm traveling to a small town in West Virginia to see exactly what they're doing to fight the problem of nutrient-laden wastewater. I'm meeting Lucas Gagnon. Lucas, please. The director of public works for the town of Moorfield, West Virginia. Lucas manages his community's brand new wastewater facility. We are far away, but we are actually the headwaters of the Chesapeake Bay. Over here along the tree line is actually the south branch of the Potomac River. Moorfield is home to one of the country's largest chicken processing operations. The town has developed a public-private partnership with the poultry operator to accept its wastewater along with that of the town residents and to treat them together. This allows the town and the plant to share the cost of the new treatment facility. Cleaning wastewater is usually a step-by-step -step process. 
but this plant does something extra. What makes this facility so special? The, the unique thing about this plant is it's, a, it's an advanced treatment system and it has biological nutrient reduction. This plant is removing phosphorus and nitrogen by using a combination of chemical and bacterial processes. So this is the first pool. That is the first pool, which is the anaerobic zone. In step one, phosphorus is released. In step two, microorganisms scavenge for oxygen, reducing nitrates to nitrogen gas. And then oxygen is reintroduced and microorganisms suck up phosphorus. In step four, more nitrates are reduced to nitrogen gas. And in step five, more phosphorus is absorbed. Finally, the water flows into secondary clarifiers from which sludge and phosphorus solids are removed. It's a big job. But how much water flows through here every day? When this plant's operational, it'll flow probably three and a half million gallons per day. Wow. And how much nitrogen and phosphorus is removed over the course of a year? Over the course of the first year, we'll probably see a reduction on the order of 90,000 pounds of nitrogen and close to 90,000 pounds of phosphorus as well. Most of the nitrogen returns to the atmosphere as a gas, while the sludge and phosphorus solids will become certified Class A compost for farms or gardens. This mountain community found an industrial partner with which it could invest in a long-term solution to their nutrient-laden wastewater problems. Upstream investments have huge benefits to residents downstream and will reduce the occurrence of dead zones. Conscientious treatment of wastewater can make a permanent impact on nutrients within our watersheds, but not every community has access to municipal wastewater treatment. There are ways to reduce the nutrients in wastewater before it even leaves your home or business by using products like phosphate-free detergents and composting food waste rather than using a garbage disposal. By cleaning the water we use, we can create a long-term, sustainable source of water in the future and reduce dead zones. Now, while there are technological solutions to the wastewater problem, prevention is always better than treatment. And the good news is that each and every one of us has the power to improve the quality of the water in our own communities by understanding and taking precautions about what we put down our drains, be it in the bathroom, the laundry room, or the kitchen. Earth Echo International recognizes that young people are making a positive difference in the health of our water planet, watches our expedition team joins youth from an elementary school in Petersburg, West Virginia, as they participate in a stream bank restoration project. Go to www.earthecho.org to watch this and stories of others engaged in service learning initiatives in their communities.